This is a full frame camera Sony ZV E1, and I have attached to it the Sigma 17 to 40 f1.8 APS C lens. Does it even make sense to use APS C glass with full frame cameras? Let's find out. Here is the full frame image at 40 mm, and as you can tell, guys, we have pretty big vignette, and at 17 mm, it's even bigger. And right now, let's try to go into the steady shot active mode, which gives you 1.1x crop or 10% crop. But still at 17 millimeters you can see a pretty huge vignette and at 40 millimeters it is almost gone but still we have a little bit of vignette so now let's try to add the clear image zoom so right now we don't have any and now let's go to 1.3x 30 percent crop and as you can tell guys at 17 millimeters we lose the vignette at 1.3x clear image zoom and at 40 millimeters we also don't see any major issues with vignetting at least with the static image but we also have a different steady shot mode in the ZV-E1 which is called dynamic active steady shot and it adds about 40% of a crop everywhere it says like it's 30% of a crop but in my experience it feels more like a 40% crop or 1.4x crop and as you can tell guys at 40 millimeters and at 17 millimeters we get rid of the vignette completely i also have to admit guys that the dynamic active stabilization is not present in all the sony cameras and also don't forget that in many sony cameras when you use clear image zoom you lose the eye autofocus it only works in contrast autofocus and it works much worse and in the end of the video i'll also tell you a few words about the photo mode with APS-C lenses on full-frame cameras. Okay, previously we had the stationary shots, but what if we move the camera? So here we have the 17 mm on the Sigma and the steady shot active with 1.1x crop factor. And as you can tell, guys, the vignette moves across the frame a lot, which is not perfect. Then we apply the clear image zoom with 1.2x, so in total we get about 30% crop or slightly more. And as you can tell guys it is more than fine and it's enough to mostly get rid of the vignette if you pan or tilt really quickly you can see the darkening of the corners in the extreme corners on something like the sky but all in all in the real world it won't be a huge issue and now we're zoomed in at 40 millimeters we still have 1.2x clear image zoom and steady shot active with 1.1x crop and everything looks just fine but if we don't apply the clear image zoom you can tell that the image is really struggling with the vignette and it moves a lot as you move the camera so this option is not good now we have applied the dynamic active stabilization and in my experience it's about 1.4x crop some people say that it's around 1.3x but it's really closer to 1.4 as i said so as you can tell guys in some extreme corners you do have slight vignettes and when you move the camera the vignette gets even stronger and it shifts a little bit so i wouldn't say that the dynamic active steady shot is a good option at 40 millimeters the situation is much better but at 17 millimeters it can be a real issue so in my experience the dynamic active steady shot is definitely not magic and you can have some issues with vignetting on lenses designed for crop sensor cameras if you use it on a full frame camera with dynamic active steady shot and now we're taking a look at the real world example of using the dynamic active steady shot and as you can tell guys right now i have one over four thousandths of a second shutter speed and this is crucial to not have artifacts of digital stabilization in steady shot dynamic active with 1.4x extra crop first of all guys you do see pretty jittery movement so the dynamic active steady shot is not stabilizing your footage like a gimbal that's definitely not the case you also can see pretty harsh vignetting in the top left corner and also guys in a lot of cameras when you use dynamic active steady shot or clear image zoom your autofocus performance is getting worse the sony zv one does retain eye autofocus when it is in steady shot dynamic active or when it is using the clear image zoom but still the autofocus performance is a bit worse than on the real full frame glass at least in my experience and in this particular scene you can definitely see that but also guys keep in mind that you have to use very short shutter speeds because right now i'm using one over 50th of a second and as you can tell it's a proper shutter speed for 25 fps but still guys you get a lot of motion blur and the image kind of doubles or you kind of see a ghost or something like this the dynamic active steady shot is not meant to be used with this slow shutter speed at least one over 250th of a second or better one over 400th of a second and the same applies for stabilizing the footage in post with catalyst browsed and gyro data you need to have not a lot of motion blur that's the key point all in all guys i don't think that the dynamic active steady shot is a game changer because you do have the vignette on the sigma at least at 17 millimeters and you have to use very short shutter speeds as i said so i wouldn't use it as much 
I would prefer to use the clear image zoom, but still if you need to make some stationary shots, the dynamic active stabilization is more than fine and as you can tell you still get pretty nice results. And by the way, here is the minimum focus and distance of the Sigma 17 to 40 at 17 millimeters. And right now guys, you see the minimum focus and distance at 40 millimeters, but it's very mushy guys, so stop down if you want to have at least some sharpness with this lens on the minimum focus and distance. And now we're taking a look at the Sony FX30 at 17 millimeters, steady shot off, that's an APS-C camera and this is what you get and now you see the zve1 full frame image and the clear image zoom at 1.5x so we have exactly the same sensor size let me say so aps-c sensor right now on the zve1 and at the first glance the images are more or less comparable you can see that the frame looks more or less identical but then guys if we zoom into 500 percent scale you can definitely tell that the image on the zve1 with clear image zoom is much softer First of all, the Sony FX30 does have 6K down sample to 4K, and this is why it's slightly sharper. But also the ZV-E1, when you apply the clear image zoom, it also loses some resolution. And some people say that the clear image zoom is lossless or something like this, but it's not the case. I did test it myself multiple times. You do lose some resolution when you use clear image zoom, especially at 1.5x. And here you can see the Sony FX30 APS-C camera at 40 millimeters with the Sigma 17 to 40 steady shot off. And then I tried to apply the clear image zoom by 1.3x times. And as you can tell, we have more swirly bokeh on the lens. And I really like this effect from the Sony zv one when we're not zoomed into 1.5x but only zoomed into 1.3x of clear image zoom. But when we compare two images side by side because of the focal length difference, we still get more background blur and separation on the FX30. And then just out of curiosity, I've tried to zoom in the Sigma to 27 millimeters approximately at f1.8 and then to apply the clear image zoom by 1.3x to get approximately 35 millimeters in full frame equivalent. And guys, I've used also the 35 millimeter f1.8 lens by Meike. And as you can tell, guys, we still get more background blur and separation on a true full frame lens than on the clear image zoom 1.3x and about 27 millimeters on the APS-C lens. It's just how the physics work, guys. That's why the full frame cameras have more background blur and separation. Of course, guys, we should not forget that some Sony cameras have a crop in 4K 50 or 60 FPS like the Sony a7 IV, so if you do shoot only at 50 and 60 FPS with those types of cameras, you can actually consider a lens for APS-C camera. Also, in terms of photos, for example, the Sony a7R5 has a crop mode with about 26 megapixels, which is definitely more than usable, but to be honest, guys, to me, it looks more like a crop than a true life hack. To conclude, technically and physically it is possible, but for example with the ZV-E1 and Sigma 17 to 40 you still get pretty big vignette in dynamic active steady shot mode, especially at 17 millimeters, and you have to use very short shutter speeds as I said to not get the artifacts of the stabilization because of the motion blur. In clear image zoom mode you still lose a little bit of quality and resolution, but if you use the steady shot active plus clear image zoom at 1.2x you can get pretty decent results with this lens and camera combination. I definitely cannot recommend buying crop lenses for full frame cameras, but I think guys this test was at least interesting and maybe even helpful to you. And if you did enjoy this video, smash the like and subscribe buttons and hit the notifications bell. I really appreciate it. And since we're talking about the APS-C lenses, here is my comparison of top 6 zoom lenses for APS-C Sony cameras. Enjoy watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, bye.